All right, another episode of RSL Random Fan Podcast. I'm your host, a host, Brent Goble, joined by... Brennan Goble. And okay. three host, Tyler. Three host, yeah, Trey. New number, you like 33. Yeah, buddy. Trey, Trey. All right, so RSL hosted the Kansas City what? Sporting Kansas City, the sporting sporters of Kansas City. They're not very sporting. In. No, they weren't. They, uh, they came in, they wanted to, I don't know, fisticuffs, brawl. A lot of handbags. They brought their handbags to the game, so <laughs> bless you. But it was nice. Um, it was nice that the RSL and Kansas City got back to playing rivalry games. Felt like a rivalry game, but let's get to the lineup. Can we want to do that? Yeah, host. Uh, let's get it going. So we got uh, Mac, uh, McMath in the goal. And then we had our four-man back line, Brody on the right, Glad and Bear in the center with Katranis on the left. Our uh, center defensive mid is going to be Anneli and Ojeda, really control in the middle there. Um, upper third is going to be Gomez, Chicho, and Barajas with Julio running front and center. Good, Good starting. Oh, sorry. And then the bench, we have Beavers, Chang, Chang Hidalgo, Luna, Quinton, the tall guy, Yakison who came back, which is great, uh, Palacio, and Silva. Not that Silva, the other Silva. The other Silva. Junior Silva. Junior Silva, not Marcelo. Yeah, correct. He was sitting in the uh, suite two down from us. Oh, really? I could see him when I leaned forward really far and pretend I wasn't we like, cheering. Familio. Yeah. They just would <laughs> not look at you. Tyler just kept waving. I'm like, hi, hi. Have you, have you met me and my brother? Hey, how are you? <laughs> kept leaning over. Lean. You're going to fall out. Come just over. wave at me. Gosh. <laughs> I just want to feel special. <laughs> and right, you were well, at the game. Yeah, I was at, uh, I was at the corner. You were using our tickets there at the, in the stands, being a fan. Yeah, it was a good time. Nice weather, too. Yeah. Really, really nice. I was scared really it was going to be too cold. but A little windy down yeah, there? Yeah, it was quite windy, but in the stadium wasn't too bad. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I definitely messed up my hair, but it was great. Dried yeah. out my eyes. Mm. Yeah, I remember those days when I had hair. You, Tyler? No. So yeah, far back. So uh, far back. So, you had hair more recently than I did. <laughs> How so, long it's been. thoughts on the start of the game? Get right into the first half. We'll go over the first half. What do you think? I thought, since uh, you guys are jumping, aren't jumping in there, I thought that the game just started. There's been a uh, theme the last couple of games. Teams have just been jumping on each other with between RSL and Kansas City. I mean, right off the bat, Kansas City shanked a shot. Um, oh, they shanked a shot that went out for an RSL corner. Yeah. Two minutes, second minute, RSL already had a corner. And we really, really, really should have been up one nothing. Glad rose up like a salmon and just missed the goal. He, I don't I think about, he expected to be that wide feet. open. It was uh, pretty unfortunate. Did, yeah. Did, did it go farther past the goal than he was away from goal? Because he was like three feet from goal. Yeah, I think he was at the six. Yeah, he was at the six, and he was smack and that dab was in the a center. Sweet ball from Katrana. Oh right? yeah, such a good curling ball yeah. under there. I love the I love the right side left footed shot. Like Cross. it's so yeah. it benefits the attacking uh, attacking play. Well, the goalie doesn't feel like he can go after it because it's Curling bending away, away from, from him. him. Yeah. Yeah, I love That's it. That's a tough one, and so pull scamp. If that's how you say it. Pulse camp. Stayed on his line and did not come and was rewarded for standing there. That's good. Yeah. Doing nothing. Yeah. Glad Justin probably wants that one back. That was. Oh, yeah. That was. I mean, it was going to be one of these old man dance ones. I was <sighs> like, break out the old man dance because it's right on his head. And then he just missed by so far. <laughs> I was like. Shoot. Wouldn't it be great if you just like said, hey guys, as a team, every time we score, let's just all do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just pass the baton on, you know, yeah. so that way we can sell more bobbleheads. It's our heads. team, what's know, that, what's that celebration. Dance? That's the dance they do with, oh, the conga. Yeah, they should do all the old the man conga, conga line. Yeah. No one does that, right? Right? <laughs> For a reason. <laughs> hey, it'd be funny. It'd be retro. Yeah. Retro. Yeah. Retro gold. That's what they call us when we don't. To That's a nice way of saying you're old. 
I prefer exactly. I prefer vintage. Vintage. Oh, that's vintage. the next step. Classic. See, this is vintage. That's retro. retro. <laughs> then we get still retro. Then we get to classic. Yeah, the classic. And then we just get to um, you know the funeral. Dead. Anyway, <laughs> one thing we got jumped off the uh, lineup really quick because there was one person missing in the lineup. Oh, I thought it was surprising. Matty Matt Matt. Mm, the tree. The no, crooks. No Matt crooks. In the lineup, what were your thoughts, Ooh. Brennan Amunja? Um, well, I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant to say that that's a negative. Um, I do think him coming in, he's been struggling, uh, especially watching what he was capable of doing over in England. His style isn't really matching up with MLS at the moment. But me personally, I'm not willing to give up on him just yet. I still think yeah. that's a really solid piece that could help us out, like. A lot especially getting later in the season um, so I hope it's not something where he's looking at other options and we're looking at other options oh I don't I don't think so yeah I think it's too early for that but but yeah. is he hurt I mean he, he was hurt he was hurt and we heard that he was wasn't limping at practice mentally yeah, or doing was it some, no just doing some jogging around practice. yeah he didn't participate at practice oh man so we don't know so that's, that's well, one of the things I thought so. about about Matt Crooks during the game was RSL was finally playing a game that he would fit in. Mm -hmm. Because RSL, they were much more patient. They weren't, um, and this could have been Kansas City as well, kind of closing off the right side. Well, they were very, they were very physical, so we weren't as uh, willing to run up as fast. So I thought hey, he could, he would have fit in well with the way the game was played. And also, we can talk about uh, Barajas. In the first half, he seemed like he was all over the place. In the first half, and then, uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's funny because we talked at halftime and we give away on Twitter our halftime orange slices. So, oh, you did? Uh, yeah, we'll, I need we'll, to get we'll Twitter. announce those later. I need to get but Twitter. yeah, you better get Twitter before it goes away. People are bailing on that. Yeah. But Barajas was all over. Which, when we asked Pablo post game about that. He's like, yeah, we were kind of getting in each other's way at a point there. And I was like, because I asked, like, why didn't Gomez get the ball at all in the first half, basically? Yeah. You know? Why did, was that something they were doing or something we were doing? And he's like, yeah, we kept... About, you were asking about Gomez. Gomez, specifically, yeah. And he's like, well, when we give people freedom up there, sometimes they take too much freedom and end up on the wrong side of the field. And you know what I mean? And then, I mean, he subbed him at half so obviously he was running into other people's way and are we talking about Gomez or Barajas? Barajas. Barajas. But he, he asked the question about Gomez. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And yeah. he kind of jumped into in, And uh, Pablo kind of answered it like well some guys get a little out of position and get in the way so we couldn't get him the ball a few times and anyway yeah. that's kind of how Pablo answered it mm. and I thought kind of the same thing I think Barajas also he's got this shiftiness to him that not a lot of players on our team have that Kansas City could run right at a lot of our guys and not a lot of them can get right by them. You know what I mean? Like we talked about this with Severino last year a lot is he's the guy that can move the ball and get by people quick. Um, Gomez can do that as well and Chicho can do it and if Fidel can start to do it on a consistent basis now we got three guys up top that can do it because I don't, I don't really think Anderson Julio is gonna. You don't think so? Dribble past people. He's gonna kick it and run. No, he's gonna be great. He's gonna be awesome. <laughs> but so anyway, that that was that kind of that's a really long answer to get to the point that I think Fidel kind of got in his own way, and at times he held the ball up really well, and at times he kind of got in other people's way and made it difficult to make the final pass into the final third. I agree with that. Um, and also, especially if you're moving into that box and you're trying to make that, um, you know, that nice run inside or just get to the outside to send a ball in, there has to be somebody or a couple other players mirroring the same movement within the same rhythm. And nobody is willing to move like Barajas at the moment. I mean, Julio is a straight line guy. Um, I mean, he can't even really stop very fast. Um, <laughs> can't go backwards. He can kind of turn fast, kind of. He's kind of like a drag race. <laughs> you know, he's just real, real fast. And then the only thing to stop him is a parachute. And so, 
I think um, the we, ref, the ref, oh, the <laughs> yeah, the yeah, parachute. yeah, and that's the parachute. Definitely is the offside <laughs> flag that he loves to be a part yep. of. Yep. Um, Only had two offsides though this game. Yeah, and then the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one he hit off the post, and then one earlier. Oh, yeah. So dumb, but yeah. So I think I think Barajas is. Uh, I I I wouldn't put him like it was it was surprising to see him sub it out halfway through. Um, I still think that the way he was moving was asking the right questions of the back line from uh, Sporting KC, and I would like to see that because I mean Gomez did that many games throughout the season where he was the only one having extra tempo compared to everybody else, and he got some results. I mean not a lot, but still some. So I don't know. I wouldn't have taken him out. I would have honestly taken out Julio. And done something a little bit more dynamic up front overall. What about the rest of the lineup? I think this might have been minus Crooks um, and pushing Chicho up top. Or even having Luna in the middle and Chicho up top. But I don't know if Luna is staff. Well, that's a good thing to bring up. Chicho was actually pretty successful in this position. He he's like the in best the withdrawn nine. nine and a half. Yeah, because he's, he's he doesn't he's our have best pace. Nine. In this game, it showed. Yeah. he really does not have a lot of pace. He's you not know? gonna blow by people. Right, on and yeah. having the options to the give and goes and like through passes, Chicho is I think a better option here. Or the starting lineup have him here, but obviously it's gonna or organically change throughout. But I preferred him here instead of at the very top, overall. That's a good point. And I think that's a, a work to be done there up top. I would actually love to see Gomez take Julio, Julio's that spot and then put Luna there. I think yeah, Gomez that would the, be... at the point is probably something that we should look at. Yeah, but he's our best striker. And you want to play your best striker at striker. And I like him in the midfield, but I love him up top. You know what I mean? I don't. And, and you guys can love him in midfield too. Attacking midfield, whatever you want to call that position. Yeah, but... The withdrawn forward, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that one. But for me, I, I like him up top. He hustles, he, he's gritty, he's he's everything a, a Utah 9 should be. You know what I mean? Like, I think everybody here appreciates that hardworking, hard knocks, don't take no crap from nobody kind of mentality up at forward. You know what I mean? Do you think he was better than Espindola? I like Espindola in a very different way. Yeah. He was feisty, and, and uh, but he got it wrong a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh. his feistiness sometimes just straight up backfired so often. I absolutely adore <laughs> Fabian Espindola. He yeah. was one of my favorite, all-time yeah. favorite RSL players. And he had the cool hair. And he hurt himself doing a round off. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, so many, like, funny things about that dude. I just love, you he know? He missed a wide open net in the final. Yeah. yeah, you know, all those fun things are, are all tied to him. <laughs> but RSL, I, I'm really starting to like this lineup. I, I'm still concerned about the depth. Because once you get past 11, 12, 13 players, it's it's still yet to be seen if the the bench players are there to really help us out. But they're doing a great job, so there's nothing to nothing to really complain about. Anelli and Anelli and Ojeda might be the absolute engine of this team. They're the unsung hero um, on the field, and you see it in spurts all the time, putting pressure on the outlets all the time. So even if somebody's on the ball, they you, I was watching specifically Anelli and Ojeda are clogging up all the open spots. It's so nice to see it. And, passing lanes, yeah. And they're they're putting the miles in. Like they are always, they're the they're the ones tracking back even though they're not in the play. Um, I think there was a situation in the first half or the second, I can't remember, my apologies. But there was a point where only about two or three of us got back when um, Sporting was countering against us and they missed Both it outright. Of them were. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them were there. And McMath was just yelling at him or whatever. And I was, I was watching and I was like, dude, Anelli and Ojeda are not even like in the play. Like they're not even gonna do it. Like they're not even gonna be in it. But they still hustled back to get there. Like that's that's incredible to see, and it, you just don't see it as much. And one thing I do like about them, besides all of that, Anelli hasn't missed a minute this year. I think they said on the broadcast sixty-eight miles or something already. I mean, he's just putting in the work. Sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah, he's putting in the work. Uh -huh. But also what I love about Anelli and Ojeda, they have the, an incredible temperament. 
to play physical tough in the midfield. They've got the mindset not to go crazy, not to overdo it. Oh, Hannah was kind of going crazy in this game. But not to be not to be dumb. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're not, not gonna. To be, not to be uh, Brian not, Barra. They're not gonna pick somebody up. Well, that, <laughs> that was so hilarious. Well, which we'll get to. Which we're, we're, we're gonna get to. We're still in the first half, ladies Brian. and gentlemen. Come but, on, man. Yeah, we wanted. To we wanted to get to the 14th focus minute. Focus on the lineup. I think. Uh, I, I think in the 14th minute, Anelli made a misstep. He he knew he wasn't gonna get there, and he dove oh, in. Oh, the yellow card. That's and right. That was a hard yellow. That was a yeah. That was a dangerous that was a yellow. Strong, strong yellow. Coming in from behind like that, sliding yeah. his feet up. And it's a good thing he came from the side and kept his foot low. Yeah. If Just that goes enough, high on the calf, that's they, I, I think you're, that's you're positioning is red. red. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the first thing I said was like, oh, 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 this is gonna be. And I'm like, he kept his foot low. He kept his foot low. Come on, ref, notice that. I gotta say, I did not like the way the ref officiated the first half. It's it's not like he did he did it bad. It's he set the wrong tone for how the game is going to be played. Yeah. It was very aggressive at the very beginning. You could tell there was a lot of animosity going on, especially that Russell dude. I mean, he he skied the ball twice into the stands like super disrespectful. Johnny um, Russell. Yeah. And there was a couple of times where he let the play go on where if he would have called it back, it would have really put like restraints on all this negative energy playing. And it would have set a better tone for the game. But I think that first half was just out of control. It was borderline. And I was watching the game again and stealing uh, what Dunny was saying. He was, Dunny was like, it was right after when um, Anelli got wiped out on the side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just wiped out. And um, D Dunny was saying, well, I like the way he's letting them kind of find the way the game's going to be played. Which, you know, as a former player, he probably has more insight than, than I do. But I, I think it was right there. It could have gone either, either way. But I, I think the teams respect each other and like playing against each other and we're just having a good time. And it didn't get too didn't get too crazy. And I think that's... <laughs> Till that one What moment. game were you watching, man? <laughs> well, you could feel it. You could feel it. Like, well, all of the challenges that they did... They were they were like yeah, that's they, why I, they were I deep. couldn't believe there was only one yellow card given to Kansas City. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like they well, were so chippy at each other. There was so much retaliation going on. That's why Katranis is flipping out. He's like going one, two, three. <laughs> like how many times? Like, yeah, Katranis got nudged out of bounds on that one by Salawi. Bro, he was getting checked, and then also yeah. Brian Vera gets flown off to the side because he got you know he, he got, got his karma once. this game. Yeah, but yeah, man, it was a physical game that was not. It was not clean. Well, yeah. I didn't say it was clean, and it was physical. But you it said they did, were having fun? Yeah, I don't think it crossed the line to dirty. I think it was two teams playing some, some physical football. Yeah. And to your, I agree, maybe a couple more whistles might have toned that down a little bit. But it didn't get where the, it ended up. He didn't lose the game. The ref didn't lose. The, the players didn't lose the game. I, I, I think he's agree. I think he missed a couple of calls, especially agree. the foot stomp thing, right? So remember, Gomez. Um, so Gomez goes by, uh, just starts to wait. The, the the guy, that guy, Leopold, number fourteen. He goes by him, and he kind of steps on his foot, right? So the ref calls it, and he's like, "No, nah, he stepped on his foot, even though you weren't near the ball or whatever. You stepped on his foot. Okay, stomp, foul." Okay, cool. He didn't yellow card him. I thought that was fair. Um, but then, just like two minutes later, Katranas gets down the wing, oh. pulls the ball back, yeah. gets his foot stomped so he couldn't twist back to get the ball, and the ref didn't call that. Yeah, and he was he was on the ground just chilling for like a good 20 seconds. Yeah, he, he wanted to make sure the ref came over and talked to him to see if he was okay so he could yell at him personally. Yeah. He wanted a personal I like Katranas. yell at the oh, ref. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I was point was noticing, Katranis is way up, and man, he's right on the line. Oh, he's not even a defender. He's, no, no, he's <laughs> he's a winner. He's a crosser. And yeah. One of the things I think that could RSL could could improve on, they're in this game especially. They a lot of the offense was starting with Glad and Vera. Right. They, they were recycling the ball. They were a lot more patient, and there were many many times where they could have had a line breaking pass from Vera. Especially Vera. Oh, I see what you're saying. And hit Katranis because Johnny Russell was playing off of him. 
yeah quite a bit and he was uh Katranis and Barajas had quite the the connection and they were very dangerous together but I do like Katranis and I think that's the next evolution for the team I think if they're going to play in the back then whoever's in the back Katranis Quinton Vera um, or I mean Vera Glad whoever's playing those center backs that line breaking pass between not kind of skipping over and Nelly and Ojeda and picking up some space, that could be really dangerous. Okay, so in the first half, were you guys expecting a goal? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From yeah. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I you? felt I felt like Sporting deserved one. I really? Think. I think, uh, well, you know, Russell's uh, shot that he went across the goal. Yeah, I mean, he had two. He had two of them. There, there was one that really should have went in. Um, I really think we, we kind of, we got caught on the counter and didn't have enough people back. Um, but it was a f I was so frustrated after the first half. Like, I, I thought it was kind of a dirty game. I thought it was a little physical when it shouldn't have been for being the very start of the game. And I'm not sure that we deserved a goal in that first half. Maybe. maybe you know. I mean, Glad's yeah, opportunity I mean, was a big one. I mean, Gomez with his left foot on the corner of the box, that was a really good one. Yeah, he had a really good chance there. But we left a lot of... We did. And, and, you know, there were a lot of, like, um, especially around the 20th minute, we had a lot of, like, you know, deep shots or good dribbles and good getting close to goal. But we get a little, I don't know, out of sorts when we get in that final third. It, we don't know how to finish. It's like we don't have a clear identity of how we can finish. You know what I mean? Like we're still definitely, trying to figure it out. Definitely not like Miami did this week. Right? Oh, boy. <laughs> like they just had this clear idea of what they were going to do, and they could not be stopped against Red uh, I think we Red saw Bull. glimpses of it, and I think it, it can come, especially if they're more a little more patient like they were with Kansas City. Some of that could be Kansas City also... Locking forcing them to it's be a, pretty, a little more patient. Pretty good Kansas City team, to be fair, right? Like their record isn't awesome, but they're they're, they're good. Still dangerous, yeah. Yeah, and two former Mexican international team players on the team in Pulido and Memo Rodriguez, which I think we're halfway through the game when you said, "Dude, Memo Rodriguez is blah blah blah," and I was like, "I don't even know what you just said because you said Memo Rodriguez." And I didn't even realize he was playing in this game because Anella and Ojeda had locked him down. Pretty much owned him. And I don't even know if Polito you know? Polito was like a ghost. He didn't have any impact on the game. He he was not like putting his best effort. I don't think out there. He was kind of just standing on defense and not doing a lot. We do that to a lot of teams, so I feel like it's kind of Master Eddie's game plan. And, yeah. yeah. I think we I think defensively there's a lot of things we do that a lot of people don't pay attention to. Yeah. Yeah, this I'm I'm starting to become a believer. I'm trying not to to get too hyped, too excited. <laughs> oh, you don't want to get let down. I don't. Oh. I don't. I have been let down. So aren't you, aren't you supposed to be okay with being let down if you're an RSL fan? <laughs> like we only have fan. one star over right. our crest. Yeah. I mean, we kind of we kind of got to roll star. with the punches, you know? But to your point, uh, Memo Rodriguez had a really nice stinger. That really low shot early, oh, yeah. that zing past, uh, that on frame might have challenged McMath, mm -hmm. and then Johnny Russell had the one that went zinging across. Yeah, and that was the I, one that I thought should have went in. But he also had the other one where he uh, beat Opened everybody. He was wide open and Vera came across, and I think he went with his left foot and yeah, totally, to the right. totally so missed it. That kind of brings up a good point. Um, Johnny Russell and people who play like him. Uh, where they're really, really good on the ball, you have to have two people defend them. You have to, right? And nor and a lot of times it'll be the outside back first, and you want to push him to your other backs, right? So when Katranas was engaging him, he was trying to push him towards another player so that he could get the double team help. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where uh, Barajas kind of let down. Oh, Barajas! No, he's not he should have he should have dove in a couple times on Johnny Russell as a crackback. Because remember, the first defender we talked about this a lot. First defender's job is to slow the ball down mm -hmm. and try to help delay a little bit to get somebody else to come in and be the second defender who's going to come in aggressively to go right after the ball. Right, right. That's the second defender's job, not the first defender. First defender slow him down 
and then sprint to the to the point, shuffle their feet, and then separate the uh, the player from the ball. Which you know, sprint, shuffle, separate. That's the three S's we teach the little kids, right? Sprint, shuffle, separate. Yeah. You get that down? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. And then the second defender's job is to come in. Spaghetti, serpent, succotash. What's it again? <laughs> the second defender's <laughs> job <laughs> is to come in. Spaghettios. Spaghettios. It'd be Wild Willy one touch, right? Mm -hmm. So Wild Willy one touch just wants to come in and kick the ball as hard as he can, right? Julio. Yeah, kind of like Julio does sometimes, mm. not often. But uh, that way you can kind of be aggressive. That second defender, and. I think that was another reason why Fidel got subbed at halftime. He, I was watching the game again, because uh, he loved to watch hard sell. And on that shot where Vera came over and uh, Russell sent it out to the left, Barajas, Dunny even mentioned it, Barajas, oh, he, he should have done more there. Because mm -hmm. he just kind of let Russell go. He away. just let him walk by, dude. Yeah. At least throw a shoulder on him, right? Like give him one of these if you're on camera here. That's just like, you know. Give him one of those at least, right? Oh, Even yeah. if you get him in the back a little bit. He's not going to go down. Maybe he will. So They're at Kansas City. And RSL, did they have any shots in the first half? They did. They yeah, and also, uh, I think that was uh, Gomez. Gomez had an opportunity right at the top of the box, and he kind of just opened his hip up and uh, skied the ball, which he was trying to just finesse the ball in when he should have just went laces through it. Didn't know Hayda. Oh, Hayda had a long shot, too, mm -hmm. I think. Gosh, if that guy had a foot... He would be worth so much money. Who? I, um, Ojeda. I think like... A shot, you mean? A shot. He hasn't shown that he has a shot. Like, if he has a shot, he he has the touch, he has the finesse, he has the IQ. I mean, that guy, that guy's going to be worth way more than we ever bought him for. And we're just not seeing it. I don't understand why we're not showing that. Yeah, and we've seen Palacio hit a few. Yeah, when right? it's like, his very first game, he like yeah. did a 40-yarder. Yeah, he's had a few when people back off him too much. Mm -hmm. But Ojeda hasn't had that breakthrough smasher yet, has yeah. I want him to get the confidence. Because like, when yeah. Brian Vera all of a sudden showed up with a left foot and could shoot it in, all of a sudden he was taking cracks at it. Yeah. I would just love to see a little bit more action at the top of the box. Oh, and then Kansas City also had that play down early where it was Shalloy, uh, took it to the, to the line, and had a cross right across the front of goal and Polito was sitting there and McMath got down to his left and, yeah. and Vera was there like if that gets through then we're then we are down one nothing. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah. Yeah. yeah McMath got down quick. I even asked him about that in the post game show. I said, Hey Zach you didn't have a lot to do in the first half. You had to get down on that one. Um is it better for you to have consistent play or do you prefer to not have anything? And he's like, No, I, I like being involved and in fact, sometimes I'll just tell Justin to pass it to me just because I want to be involved in what's going on, you know what I mean, <laughs> when we're playing really well and stuff. So. And McMath, we can talk about him. That guy has... I don't, He's blossomed, man. He has earned earned that spot, nailed it down there. Well, it's a new style of McMath, too. It's yeah. not something that he's done in his in his past, like with Colorado and all no. the other teams. It's like sweeper-keeper, but not a sweeper-keeper. Like yeah. he's it's like a hybrid yeah, between sweeper-keeper and not. It's really impressive, and it allows us to have the three in the back and still be pretty secure with moving Contranus up. I really, really like that play out of McMath. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's been I know they want to get Beavers in, and thankfully... They can have him if they get a run through the U.S. Open Cup, which starts on Wednesday. Then he's getting the call up. Zach told us in the post game yeah. show. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he's like, "Well, I won't be playing on Wednesday." Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> let, let Beavers have it, but McMath, I, I really want him to just keep playing. Yeah. So, but we, we hope we hope everybody on the Beavers team just 18, keeps playing. He's, yeah, he's he's only eighteen. Or he's got plenty of time. There. But after Never that, leave us. After that save um, by McMath at down low, it seemed like RSL kind of turned a corner. Stepped it up a bit. Stepped it up in the last uh, five, eight minutes of the, the first half. It was pretty much all RSL. They kept, they put the pressure on. Gomez had that left-footed shot that was a, a missile that uh, the keeper had to punch mm -hmm. over the bar. And uh, after that, I think we got to halftime. But it was... It was, a, it was funny, too, when he when that happened, because everything up until that moment with Gomez was almost garbage. 
Well, even the touch before he hits it, it yeah. was like he, that touch got away from him, and you're like, "What are you doing?" And then exactly. all of a sudden, exactly, exactly, power and out of nothing. Boom! Yeah, and I love that about him. It's so unpredictable. And as he was like dribbling forward, I'm like, "Oh, he mis hit that one. Watch this. He's gonna smash it at goal now." And he did. And I was like, "That's hilarious." Mm -hmm. And it was a great save by Paul Scamp, who actually came up with some crazy saves. One was oh. like his thigh, one was like his calf, mm. you know, that's the second half. So I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about seven. that. Uh, but in the first half, he did time waste pretty aggressively. So if you, <laughs> were, uh, weird, right? if you were sitting in the stands, you got to hear the stupid chant like, 17, 18, Ruff, come on. Right. Um, what is the rule? Is it 10 seconds? It used is there to even, be. But there it's was, not. There was a time when yeah. there was a, a time. There was like five seconds you could hold the ball. Like, yeah. Yeah, and but so now it's just a reasonable amount of time or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So stop counting. It's pointless. It's not <laughs> he's not going to get a card until the end of the second half. Yeah. We know you can count. Good job. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so. Uh, One other thing before we get to have time. All right, I just so wanted organized. to say I was thinking about Gomez and you, the fact that the way RSL was playing, we didn't have to go through him the whole time for him still to be dangerous. We probably had right. the same amount of opportunities created. Uh, through the rest of the team by Gomez than if we were just going straight through him all the time. Maybe You know what you could have done? I could have done what? We could have uh, done the orange slices and you could have said Gomez and then tied that into the orange slice right there. I but what you're saying is we're more balanced, is that what you're saying? A little oh, more balanced and I think that that's good. We it's still, less heavy on Gomez and more spread throughout while still And we effective. still got almost the same amount of quality opportunities from Gomez. Yeah, oh, I, I think with okay, Chicho okay. in that withdrawn forward spot. That's that's, that's yeah. where we're getting it. Yeah. Because we have more weapons in the same line. Yeah. And it was Great. definitely more balanced and I loved watching it. Alright. Who wants Fair to do balanced out. get to the wait 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 Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. So half time. Get out your orange slices. Get out your orange slices. Tyler, we always start with Tyler because that's what he said. One that's time. what we said. Yeah, yeah. He didn't he always say start with he, Tyler. He bogarts the first. Well, I already, I already slice. picked mine. I picked mine at halftime at the game. Remember you tweeted it? Yeah. What, well, you for tweet? the people that don't have tweet tweets. What'd you tweet? You, you, your, yours is first. I forgot what we tweeted. What did well, we tweet? Well, let's just do it again. Okay, I picked McMath. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. I'm pretty sure you didn't pick McMath. Uh, <laughs> Did I pick Anelli or Ojeda? Ojeda? It might have been Ojeda. I think I picked Barajas, but we can do yeah, some more. Ojeda. We want to spread the love. Yeah, okay. After we thought about it, we... So, Brian. I picked Brian, and... Uh... Which, I guess he's <laughs> the only one. Brian. Yeah, Brian. Only one Brian. Well, there was two out there. Vera and Ojeda. Oh, Brian. That's right. Ojeda's a Brian. That's the B-R-A-I-A-N. Brian Ojeda. Yeah, the other one's B-R-A-Y. A-N. You can remember that because he's Paraguayan, so you think Paraguayan, Barayayayan. With lots of A's and an I in the middle. That's a maze, that thing. <laughs> That's a ridiculous way to think about it, Tyler. Yes. So who did you, Welcome who, to my life. Are you going to stick to yours or are you going to change it up? He did great. He, I'm going to change it up. He didn't put a foot wrong. Ojeda. Oh, no, another chance. Yeah. Yeah, did great. What about you? I was gonna, I, was I couldn't pick an Ellie because he picked up a yellow on that. Rash yeah, that challenge. was that was a rash challenge. I'm trying to think. There was there were there was a lot of great play. I really like Barajas, but as was pointed out by you know like the head coach that maybe <laughs> <laughs> him being dynamic was not part of the plan mm -hmm. to be all over the place. I really like that. But but he uh, kept making the defenders like back off of him because he was shifty, right? They'd come at him and he'd kind of shift side to side, and they were like, oh, I don't know what he's doing, and he was unpredictable, and the unpredictability. <laughs> And went what, through to his team as well. Right, right? I got it. I got it. I'm gonna throw a curveball. Oh, oh boy. here it comes. This is it. soccer, man. You got to do a Whoa, swerve kick, not it a might curveball. Be uh, it's a knuckleball. Mastrini. This is uh, uh, doing a Ronaldo. Oh from boy, way, way back. Uh, this is deep. Uh, Brody. What? I thought Brody had a really solid game. That's so funny because that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> 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 and I'm making fun of both of you. Because when I was sitting there, I think it was like the 33rd minute or something. It was close to the end of the half. And I was just like sitting looking at Brody. And I was like, man, that guy is like, Looks he's like working. 
he's working. Like he was, he was tracking back. He was coming in. I mean, he even got to the middle of the field one time. I was like, "Do your squirrel run. Let's go." Yeah, yeah, he did I that. Mean, I was that, cheering on the squirrel. I really run do think too. that that guy put in a game. Yeah, and also it might be because his girlfriend showed up. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. I just saw it on Instagram. He was right next to a girl because you know, like when they show off their clothes and they have their little bags. Their bag. Oh, yeah. which I need to get. Um, oh, how do you, how just, do you oh, get those? <laughs> how do you get those bags? I guess you go to the store. You go to Louis Vuitton or Gucci or. Oh, do you have to be like high end? They're only high end bags. There's some shops around. So that like probably... Walmart bag or no? Well, I mean, They're you can go target. to Bath and Body Works. They have like a camo one. They have a black one. There's some of these other ones like KB Novelties or something. Oh, what is that? Where. Maybe it looks like Louis Vuitton. It might not be. Oh, yeah. Get some knockoffs. But we should do those pictures before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Tyler rocking in. Yeah, yeah. his bags. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everybody would appreciate that. <laughs> we would see that silver jacket so much, dude. <laughs> Just a disco ball walking through the door. <laughs> Oh, oh, please write that down. We're totally yes, doing that. Definitely uh, podcast. Yep. Uh, no, yeah. but he, he was. Uh, he took a picture, and there was a girl with him, and it looked like they were significant to with each other. So hopefully, that's, yeah. that was making him want to try hard. You know, for me, seeing Brody, um, and we talked about this post game as well. Um, Brody kind of redeemed himself because mm -hmm. last time we paid KC, he looked like he should retire. Yeah. Oh, he got exposed right? so much. Oh, it it was, was so bad that Pablo so had to bad. hide him on the other side of the field. Right. Yeah, and that was so sad. But he totally redeemed himself. Mm-hmm. Pitched a shout-out. Well done, Brody. So who were you going with? Um, I was going to do a twofer. Oh, boy. Can yeah. I do a twofer? Yeah, sure. We had it's your two. podcast. Um, I absolutely i am going to give it to Vera and Katranis. I have to the say. The lefties. I just, Katranis has really opened up possibilities that I didn't expect us to have at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of hoping for it because, you know, after the Herrera um, trade and all that, right. it was kind of like, we need somebody that can send the ball into the box, is a little bit more physical. I don't mind giving up a red card a season for a dumb slide. <laughs> but Katranis is so well adept at reading the situation and getting angry at the right things. Because the things he got angry at were completely valid. It wasn't like when he, he was... When he got stomped. Like, yeah, like, when he got stomped and he was like the accumulated... Um, um, shallowy sh fouls yeah. on him. Yeah, it's like you do need to communicate to that, that to the ref. It's like, hey, this is consistently on, happening. And I don't know. I just I love the way he's being able to get us set up in set pieces, putting the ball in play. He's very aggressive moving up. And then Vera is a guy that I will stand behind every day. Like, even if he picks a guy up, um, which, in all in all seriousness, he did exactly what every freaking fan wants to do. <laughs> every fan in that stadium was like, "Yeah, we would love to pick that stupid guy up for pretending to get fouled, and let's get going." Like, it was so perfect. I didn't care if it was a yellow card, and yeah, it was accumulation, but whatever. But yeah, I was like, ah. Oh. These two guys are like exactly what I wanted on the team like three years ago. But awesome, yeah, I don't good think stuff. In the post game, Pablo was not happy about his yellow. Yeah, he's well, like, that's because he can't use him now. Yeah, he's out, he's out for actually the next two games, Vera, because um, he did. He also got in a fight against Houston. I remember. Yeah, remember yeah, the headlock. From, from the the headlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was when the he has uh, cast on, right? Wasn't that? Yeah, he had yeah, like yeah, like the a red cast thing on. Yeah. So yeah, yeah he's out for. The U.S. Open Cup on Wednesday, but I doubt they're going to play him anyway. No, they're going to they're going to give yeah, Quentin a chance. Not. But you say you were going to play him, and then this is the game he can miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he and get multiple games for that, or just one? Just no, one. For just the one. Yeah. yeah. So, are we done with halftime yet? Is there anything else we want to bring up about the game? Um, about your experience? fifteen dollars for a tall boy. Really? Fifteen. And a tall boy is a it's an alcoholic really tall beverage. Soda. Yeah, it's a very tall so soda. Um, I met up with I met up with a friend and I bought her a drink because I was she, she's my coworker, and so I was like, oh, I should get two, and it was like twenty nine dollars for two. Whoa! And I was like, what? What? So you think it's it's like fourteen dollars and something cents for a tall boy can that you can go to the store and get for like three fifty. Whoa! Yeah, I don't. understand. It's like hot dogs that. are ten bucks or something. 
Yeah, it's like ast astronomic. Like either pregame before you go and eat a lot, or just suck it up and spend a lot of money, man. That's just yeah. robbing people. It was brought up in the, the preseason as a season ticket holder by the, some tightwad. I guess it was me. That was you. But yeah, it was me. <laughs> I brought it up with uh, John. What's his last name? Kimball. Jingle Kimball. Schmidt. Yeah, I'm thinking John oh. Sullivan, and that just needs John to Sullivan. John Sullivan. No, no, uh, really no, close. John Kimball. And he says, well, we, we got the competition with the Jazz, and we're trying to keep it, you know, just under there. Uh, so that's like, Jazz is more than that? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, it must, wow. must be, but I think the concessions. I also saw some comments on Twitter as well as from other fans. But, man, it is, it is, exp it just got uh, super expensive, and maybe that's... Real quick, yeah. We were talking about going over to the movie theater and getting discounted stuff. I thought it might be cheaper to just <laughs> get a, like a buy an airplane ticket, go through security, and then buy a coke for three bucks. And yeah, instead I think of going five now, <laughs> but yeah. No, I went to, had to fly to for work oh, yeah. last week, and I got my oh, coke, nice. and it was three bucks. It was three ninety nine. Oh, okay. I think it was three ninety nine. But it's like six eight bucks for the same thing <laughs> at the stadium. Yeah, it's, it's like, pricey, and they're cheap. Don't come hungry. They're just their cheap hot dogs that they saved from last year, probably. Those yeah. were like six, seven, eight bucks just for the cheap ones. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, I guess we can't complain. Somebody's got to pay for Chicho. Right. And we're we're loving that. So Yeah, but, I'll pay that. Yeah. No, I did I did see some people complaining that season ticket holder prices are going up next year. Um, I mean, they kind of already did it this year. They said, hey, if you lock in early, you can get last year's pricing. So, and, but... People that are buying season tickets now, it's actually more than if they had, had a year pre previous. The previous year, which, you know, I, I get. It's fine. I, I looked at uh, the top end. Did you see the top end? $9,900 for the Interform uh, Budweiser Suites, whatever. The for the season? The, yeah, the ones with the patio and the, the, and the food. The, the fire and all the food. and Yeah. Really? Oh, let's yeah. get two. Honestly, we probably should. We can just we'll get next year. Combined. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll don't go half. Look. Don't go half year. Don't do that. No, we'll that's, that's, you got to experience with from that. game. Look game for a right. sponsor. <laughs> I, they also have. Uh, and speaking of uh, RSL owner news, we got the NHL club coming into town. We're taking the Arizona uh, castoffs. But I was talking to a friend. He put his money down for the season tickets there. Mm. The hundred dollar. Whatever it was, yeah. And he was looking at it, and their season tickets are like five grand, just for the. They haven't they haven't put the numbers out for whatever they're gonna call the Utah Hockey Club, which is my favorite. Utah Hockey Club. Utah Hockey Club. Utah HC. Well, there's well, <laughs> I, there's some of the things that they get football club instead of that. I like that because there's a little more, but uh, that's some <laughs> you, of don't the like, you don't like the Storm and Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you my favorite. Would Utah hand carts? No. <laughs> it's even better than that. The Tavern Knuckle Fighters. Tavern <laughs> Knuckle. <laughs> I was thinking the, the Wasatch. Just name it after the mountain range. Then you can't have controversy around it. You can't say it's too sexist. You can't say it's too violent. It's just a freaking mountain. Leave him alone. It's just a big mountain. Yeah, my friend was he was looking around at other comparable or NHL season tickets and for what he was looking at upper bowl was like five thousand he was thinking. Wow. So RSL is still really affordable. Yeah. Almost so keep terrible. that in mind, even though it may be out of your college student pricing. <laughs> right? I mean anyway. yeah, there's always a south end. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how what we do this year. But we haven't we've had season tickets since oh eight, so it's I'd feel guilty not getting them. But anyway. So that's second it. half? Second half. Let's jump in. Starts off with a really hard foul on Chicho. Did you notice that? Like they came out and tried to set the tone. And I think yeah, that's I why Vera, I didn't see that. I was I still walking my seat. Yeah, I think that's why Vera did what he did. Because he Pablo said, Well if, if if things start getting, you know, this way or that way, let's do something to fire the crowd up. Like get in there and let's let's remind these guys that we're winning this rivalry, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Well, also, before the second half, right at the start of the second half, Luna came in for Barajas. Barajas, and I was fine with that. I wanted to see what Luna could do in the middle. There's no crooks. And yeah. 
let's see what they can do together. But yeah, the, the second half started off with a bang with the Chicho foul, and it was the 47th minute where all of the handbags came out, and Vera picked up. So it was a corner, right? So we're setting up for the corner, and Vera's shallow. He's trying to guard Vera, and Vera kind of bumps him, and he falls down like a ton of bricks, like you do when you're trying to get somebody red carded, right? You pretend you got hit in the face, you hold your face, and you fall to the ground. So the ball didn't come in. It kind of went over the top. So Vera was like, all right, I'm going to fire the crowd up. Let's do this. <laughs> pick him up. So he runs over, and he, he goes to pick him up by his waist, and... Apparently, shallow. He's like 130 pounds because oh, he, he picked pick him up, up so easy. So he's like, oh my god, he just hoisted him up. And to be fair, if if you have Twitter or or Facebook, there's a few out there as well. There are a lot of funny memes being created with uh, with him. Okay. One of them was like when somebody on the other team needs a spanking or you know, stuff like that. It's like, just so funny. And I so, think the RSL admin had some. Yeah, had so he picked him up by his waist and he set him on his feet, to be fair, right? He didn't mm -hmm. throw him. He, you know, no, he there wasn't a body slam. He picked him up and stood him on his feet. Which well, I think he was mad because he picked him up and then he kind of rocked him a little bit and then he threw him down. <laughs> He's like, you're not my mama. You, oh, you're such a good little boy. <laughs> But you're not supposed to do that. No, no, you shouldn't do that. Especially if someone's down. Because they could be hurt. And especially, you know, when they're holding their face, you know absolutely, without a doubt, they did not get hit in the face. Right, and they yeah. did not get hurt. No. Yeah. And then, so it was well deserved. And then the, all, everybody came rushing over. and uh, Yeah, did you see Tommy? <laughs> Tommy tried to get close, and the ref was already on. Vera, yeah. right? He oh, kind of had like, his hand up. The and, then, and he kind of shoved away Tommy because he must have said something, right? Yeah. And and Tommy, like, flopped so hard. Did oh, you I see, didn't that? see that? No. He went down like a ton of bricks and grabbed his face, too. And the ref was right on top of it, so he knew there was nothing there. But Dunny on the broadcast sounded a little nervous. He's like, oh, no, here it comes. That was unnecessary. You know, kind of a thing. And, and uh, I kind of go back and forth between, yeah, that's really unnecessary and kind of dumb, and you know what? It fired up the crowd, and it was entertaining, and that's fun, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's where I ended up, on the side of, that was really fun that Brian Vera did that. Yeah. <laughs> I was entertained. I thought I was having a great time with it. So that's where I, that's where I ended on that. It would have been a lot funnier, a lot more fun if he wasn't sitting on the yellow card warning either. Correct. If he had like a couple uh, who of Who else is going to do it though? Yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody else is going to do it. But after that, RSL pretty much dominated the, the possession, half, the possession, chances. Because SKC can't say to get a corner in the 50th minute. Nothing really came up. But they only had one shot on goal, and that was by Shaloy. Shaloy. Shaloy in the first half, about 25 yards out, right to the keeper, and then everything else was. Um, missed opportunity over the bar outside and then in the 53rd minute this was my favorite one I didn't get the number but the Kansas City uh, center back back pass to the keeper and just oh, yeah. about put just one in the goal just missed the post <laughs> and then the, the keeper was scrambling and I thought he was going to hurt himself because he almost slammed really hard into the post oh yeah. my gosh but uh, RSL got a corner kick out of that and then uh there was also another scrum later on. But yeah, RSL really kind of picked up the tempo. It was a nice fought game in the second half, but I think on balance, RSL was the one putting on most of the pressure. And yep. For sure. And then we had like two or three chances uh, where Luna kind of went in. He had a shot on goal. He got blocked. There were three people sliding in. And if... And if Julio would have taken a good angle, he could have just knocked the ball in. If he was one to, step in front of it, he wasn't tried he? to no, race he was it behind. to the post instead of dive across. You know how you're always talking about angles. Yeah. It looked like if he would have just dove across, he would have kicked it in easy. Mm -hmm. But instead, he tried to beat it to the post because he thinks he's faster than the ball. Well, the thing that I noticed is that he was slow to react instead of being. That's the point. Yeah. He was very slow to react. He would just stand in there. If he would have just been. Regular Julio, he would, he would have been there. He would have been one step offside. Yeah, it's a double edged sword, you know? Regular Julio. Sometimes it happens, man. No, then, that, that and was... then he was offside again, and then we're like, oh, 
Has he learned? Because yeah, know. and that's what I liked. With there was a lot of interchanging play, some close play between Luna and Chicho and everybody in the front. And I think it looked like Julio was out of place at that point. Yeah, that's fu that's a good way to put it. Because it did feel like the tempo change with Luna and also slightly move, um, using the ball through the channels more, it really made Julio obsolete. Like it really did not complement his, his style of play exactly. at all. Yeah, so then we subbed him out, which I was like, wow, way to go, Pablo. When did we sub him out? 70th. 70th? When did Katranas come out? 59th, 60th, 59th minute, Hidalgo. And I was like, what? Yeah. But, uh, he looked hurt. I think he was a little... They, they said he was um, a little bit strained, plus he'd been playing full games for us for a while. So Pablo said it was just precautionary. And he also had yellow. Correct. So he, Pablo uh, did some early subs, which I really like. Can't, can't blame him. Bodhi Hidalgo came in and played surprisingly well. Oh, yeah, and also um, the co-worker that I bought a drink for. She's no, madly obsessed with Hidalgo now. She was nice. very upset with me that I didn't tell her he was attractive. What? <laughs> She's like, why didn't you tell me he was such a babe? And yeah, I was like, well, I mean, I'm not into dudes. <laughs> or guys who look like they're returned missionaries. <laughs> so, sorry. He's Chilean, man. Lay off. He's not Chilean. Remember? <laughs> he is now. <laughs> he's a CPA, remember? He's going to do your taxes. <laughs> he looks like he's going to do your taxes. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he, he came in and played really well. Yeah. And I'm Like I said, I'm really starting to appreciate him more. We'll get more comfortable with the team. There's a lot to improve. Well, I think I think the starting lineup is what sets the base for us to have the ability to trust other players. Um, the one thing I didn't enjoy too much was Palacio. When he came on, yeah, it was like he just came off the airplane and he was kind of he's got jet lag and stuff. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't have that swagger that he normally does. And that's the sad part of him not getting minutes. Yeah, it, I felt like it took him 10-ish minutes just to step up to the level of play. And sometimes that happens, like with subs, right? Yeah. They, they, they're like, all right, you're in, bro. And they're like, oh, I didn't I'm mentally, mentally prepare. Not here. Yeah. You know? And so. And one thing I like, too, about the second half watching it, they were playing out of the back, and I like the confidence that McMath has uh, playing the ball. At his, with his feet, mm -hmm. and just playing some regular balls right through the middle and playing around pl teams. Like hooking up with Anelli quite a bit. Yeah. Um, he, was, he wasn't he was even looking out the wings like he normally does. He was looking forward, which was really, really cool. And then with the, the, the hookup with Luna, it felt like now we were like, boom, Anelli, outside, back in, outside, back in, and it was a little bit more intricate. It looks like it's coming together, especially if they can tie some outside in to the wings with Katranas. Because mm -hmm. Katranas wants to go, and he has some, uh, he's a little, he has some ability mm -hmm. to attack, and he's not afraid. He did get, in the first half, he did get right up to the box and have it taken off his foot <laughs> a little too easily. But he's brave, he wants to get in there, and I think there's there's a lot of upside there. And I, I really, like I said, I really liked watching them pass a little bit more. They had way more passes on was, Saturday than, than they've had in a long time. They had over 500, what was it, 560 something passes? 560? 546. And they've been in the 300s for quite a while. So 546. That and was the 90% really... accuracy, too. Usually we're in the high 80s. Yeah, so when you're a little more yeah. calm, a little more um, controlled, a little, you possess the ball, you've got shorter passes, and it's a little easier to uh, control the tempo. So I really like that. It reminded me of. A little bit about Columbus. Did you see, uh, to take us off tangent, the goal that Columbus put on Monterey? They eliminated Monterey. Monterey. Really? Out, out the of the CCL. Rayos. Yeah. Rayados. Whatever. The what was the score? Stripers. It was I think three to they, one down there. Three in, to one in, in Monterey, in Mexico. Yeah. yeah, I think it was like four two or. On That's aggregate. a good team. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they have a pass where they strung like thirty passes, and it was just like intricate. Yeah, and yeah, every, they, almost everybody on the team touched the ball. It was it was amazing. It was beautiful. I bet Quentin's pretty sad. <laughs> well, but he look, still gets the championship if they win it because he participated in the, the build-up build up play to it. To it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love seeing that. I mean, you can possess the ball to death and you know not go anywhere, but I like the direction we're going. Well, Columbus only had like eight shots, but they had three goals. 
That's like against Premier League Monterey. stats. Yeah, right. it's what it they were like. very, like, yeah, they were clinical in the in the that's attacking crazy. end. Anyway, so that's cool that an MLS team made the final again because uh, it looked like once we hit the semifinals that things were not going well. In fact, Columbus barely squeaked through on penalties against Tigres, mm -hmm. which we ran into a guy who played for Tigres. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so. We'll tell you about that later. Oh, okay. We'll cool. tell everybody about that Man, later. You guys always have so much fun in the press box. Mm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a party. You're invited. I'll, I'll, you guys I'll tag there. out. I'll tag you. Yeah, 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 we'll take and then nobody off. shows up. Just a raccoon falls through the ceiling. I mean, <laughs> you you, you, you were there for that. I just, get, I just get a raccoon. You guys get like all these famous people, and you're like, this guy does I this. just start talking to everybody. He that's does. why. I mean, oh, hey, what are you doing here? Maybe you should sit in the stands, and then we can just go talk. <laughs> We can just start meeting friends, maybe go hang out with Dunny. Okay, no, can I tell you one of my favorite parts of the game? Yeah. One of my favorite parts of the game is when Memo Rodriguez tried to take it down the wing. And my boy and Nelly was tracking back. And I was like, he <gasps> is going to own him. Watch this. this. Slide? And he, he was like, he was like, I'm going to go wing. And Nelly's like, I'm going to cut you off. And then he started to pull it back. And he's like, oh boy, I'm going to get physical and push you off this ball, dude. And then he gave him just this tiny little window, and he stepped right in between him and the ball, and just man pushed him off the ball, dude. And I love, I love it when Americans push Mexicans around. That sounds racist, but it's not <laughs> because he's from Mexico and he's from the U.S. And I love it when he get physical. And then what happened? Memo just cleaned him out and got a yellow, dude. I laughed so freaking hard and I was like and Nelly you gotta get up and flex after that dude that was so freaking tough it's anyway. like it's kind of like when uh, 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 Luton Town is playing Man City and they have a good game correct and, where and Ross up. Barkley steps in and just man shoves somebody out of the way and that's he's Mexican. like take that <laughs> no like someone that's like up the coast, Scottish. Some take, of take that back to your home country, huh? You know, so, some, you know, Scottish guy. Well, it, you know? It's just or brilliant. Irish guy. You, you know, know, one of them, Wales. One of those guys, Wales, whatever. A neighbor that is kind of, you know. It, it just kind of shows oh. that the level of play is is evening out. It well, should and be. Memo Rodriguez has dropped off a bit. I think Kansas City was hoping for a little bit more from him, and I was very impressed by our the way we defended him out of the game he's a very good player and he did not look that good against us no he got frustrated yeah and after Hidalgo came in um there was a great play where uh, our sweeper keeper came out and uh, sent the ball out and then Hidalgo had a nice play down he dribbled through and then cut into the box had a nice fake and then he laid it off when he could have had a shot uh, i would love to see him take a shot more often mm -hmm. and yeah, I think Matty Crooks, too, you know, when he gets back in, he'll... I, I think he wants a little more passing. I think we talked about that a lot last week. Way yeah, too wants, much. He wants to mess with the ingredients a little bit. Yeah, he's like, know? pass it right back to me. Like, yeah, give, give, when he let's, gave it out wide... Let's, let's change and, yeah, the look here. Give it back to me. Yeah. He, anyway. wants to, he wants to pass you the ball, have you pass it back, suck in some defenders, and then you go and he'll catch you Yeah, he's, in he's, trying, to, he's trying, just trying to organize and create. A little bit more. Hopefully it'll work out. We'll see. But Hidalgo, Gomez uh, had a great ball across the box in the 63rd minute that Chicho just barely missed, which was a, a great ball. And uh, so, yeah, it just kept going. RSL just kept the pressure up. Uh, Julio had a great steal that opened up uh, a pass into the box, and Ojeda had that header that kind of went wide over. Yeah, he's not very clinical in front of goal. I mean, he did step into that attacking role. And allowed Anelli and Palacio to play in behind him. And I was like, we have three defensive midfielders on the, yeah. on the field. <laughs> this is a very interesting lineup. But, I mean, it worked. Mm -hmm. Because in the 81st minute... What happened? Anelli earned a foul. And that, that foul that led up to that was what I was talking about. I was, I was laughing. I was so enjoying him earn that foul. And then... We set up the foul, and we set up the kick, and it was uh, Vera, right? Was it Vera? Yeah. Yeah, it was Vera, yeah. yeah. Vera sent it in, and it was looping over, and I thought, first I thought Glad was getting in the way. He was going to get to Glad, 
but he missed it and watching the replay there was, there was a little bit more space than I thought it goes over glad and Chicho was a beautiful header down to the ground and just man, that's gotta just be a horrible feeling as a keeper because the ball's not going very fast and he, the keeper is actually falling down as the ball's coming up because so. he had to cover near post because it, yeah. it, it went all the way over and then he's got to slide to that back post to cover. And then he sees the ball and he's trying to go and to it. Then but he's got to go the other way. Oh, oh that's just got to be terrible, just watching it bounce over Couldn't slowly. Couldn't have happened to a better team, though. Yeah, right. absolutely. You know? And honestly, that, that defender almost cleared it off the line. Yeah, he did. It was really close, but he kicked it into the roof. And that's Darn. when I did not yell out, yay, yay, hooray, <laughs> because I was in the press box. Yeah, you can do that. Oh. To be I tightened up my tie, though. You had a tie? No, we didn't. Oh, okay, I was going to say, I was like, wh who is this person? I had, I had a bolo tie. I buttoned up my suit coat, okay? <laughs> he had a bolo tie, I had cowboy boots. What are you trying to do? <laughs> like, what let me this? put my tie on. Okay, I'm a lot away. of things, but I'm no cowboy, yeah, okay? See, yeah. But right before that, too, before the goal, Gomez had an incredible shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. fingertip save. If he oh. didn't put a hand on that, it's going in. Yeah, that was... Off the post. And I when, it, when that happened, I thought... He's not a good enough keeper to pitch a shutout against us. That's not going to happen. Nearly did. Almost did. Yeah. yeah. But it was a great save. That's one of those saves that... Uh, Pulse Camp's a Underrated, but it's a brilliant save. Yeah. yeah. Just I agree barely with that. got it off the post. Because if you watch the replay, like you said, it's going straight in. Mm -hmm. He's going to get beat near post. So we go up 1 nothing, and... Not much retaliation from Sporting. Not really able to connect any, any of the dots to really get us scared no, and we really. honestly kind of just cruise to a weird seven minutes yeah, um, yeah. But I don't, I don't understand so how that high. got calculated right seven minutes was I think it was six it was a six is he just saying that the kerfuffle that happened with uh, Chicho Chicho or Vera is there's that no way cute? three minutes came out of that I don't think so either it was it was it was a questionable seven minutes yeah, RSL, yeah. I guess our had four right. subs I didn't see how many Kansas City. They had quite. They had a few. I think they might have used four or five. Summary. Oh what? yeah, one of the subs. Uh, one of the, the guy was like giving his captain arm band, and the ref is like, "Come on, you gotta go!" And he's like, "I'm giving him the freaking band!" And he's all mad. <laughs> it's like I'm going. And then Chicho's yellow. That was hilarious. What was Chicho's yellow? So were they on the side the, on the side of the? Yeah, Severus so holding up the ball, and then he gets wiped out. And Chicho gets mad and just lines up one of the defenders. The biggest guy there, Kyrie Sheldon. He grabbed him. <laughs> square in the back, just shoulders him down. Just and straight through him. Because yeah. Tyler goes, that, what was that, what happened? That wasn't that bad. And then he watches the replay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a pretty yellow. solid yellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he gives the yellow, and Chicho goes to the ref. like, that's my first foul. First foul. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> in the 94th minute. <laughs> But it, it was well. Uh, oh wait, it no, was a well. No, no, no. That was that was, that was in like 90. the ninety. Yeah, it was the ninetieth yeah. minute. Yeah. No, that that foul in the ninety fourth against Anelli was uh, was rough. Have. It looked like it could have been red. Yeah, and Anelli rolled it out really nicely. Yeah. Like, watching it in slow mo, I'm like, oh, that guy's got some aerial expertise because he could have fallen really bad. Really awkwardly. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a tough challenge. But he didn't. We landed like Captain America. That was just thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I think overall this game was a frustration. I think we we got three points, but I, I wasn't too proud of these three points. I was. Yeah, I mean, if, if we would have paired that with the Columbus game and played those two games back-to-back -back at home and not got that last-minute goal, last 10-minute goal, then I think the Boo Birds would have come out pretty strong. I, I agree with that. RSL hasn't lost in seven games. They haven't lost Stop in Stop saying that kind of stuff. <laughs> you jinx it every time. No, no. Every time somebody's <laughs> out there, well, they haven't lost in eight games. Did you, you know? I would... <laughs> Bayern Munich hasn't lost a season. <laughs> like, come on, man. We said that for so many seasons, though. We tried to 11. jinx them That's because so many times. That's because we only have 100 listeners. That's no. hard for that information to get to karma it, in it's, Germany. It's 250, 250. Come on, man. Give yourself Sorry, some credit. I'm trying to downplay it so the other podcasts don't think we're that good, no. you know? And then we're just like I mean, squeaking up in the it, rankings. Come on now. You know, they're yeah. like, we're the positive podcast. <gasps> oh, we need to check Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. We need to get some negative comments yeah, in here. I need, I was, I was, so, I looking at the stats. RSL. Brad, tell us why you like that win, though. You, I'll tell you, I'll tell you I why mean, I like the, the win. Take the other side of that. Because they played solid, they controlled the ball, they weren't erratic, there wasn't a lot of chaos. 
I love the way they possessed the ball. They were the ones that kind of dictated the play. They shut them down in the second half. You add that with the good game against Philadelphia, the surprising win against Philadelphia. Philadelphia did go on to lose two in a row. After they lost. That. We broke them. It they happens. lost to us, then they lost the next game, and then they were getting beat pretty bad by DC United, but came back and got a draw. Yeah, so they're which, fixed again. Which they're they're good at getting a draw. And then, uh, who did we beat before? Oh, Chicago. Chicago is just looking. There's a, I saw a, a tweet on, uh, I guess on X, Twitter, a picture of Chicago's bench. <laughs> like, oh, how would you love to, you feel bad for these guys. They, the whole team is just like, oh. Brutal. Yeah, they're they're having a rough season. So it has been really good. Now, and one of the things that I really liked in this game as well is it happened twice and almost back to back. <sighs> Willie Agata, he was trying to get down the wing against Vera, and he just tried to like get by him, and he poked the ball, and as soon as he poked the ball, Vera just like accelerated right in between him and the ball, and he did it like two or three times. I loved it. I was like pitcher perfect defending right there from your boy Vera. So, yeah, we dominated the possession, 58.6%. More shots, we had 14, they had 10. We had four shots on goal. The expected goals was more like 1.31, so we probably could have got a goal in there. And uh, Block shots, we had total passes, was 546 to 386. I like to see that 546, we, which is all 150, 200 more than we are usually getting. Control is kind of what you were saying, and I, yeah. I totally agree with that. It was a very controlled win. We had seven corners. Kansas City gifted us a couple. <laughs> they had the one in the first half where the guy just ripped it off his own player and it, it zinged 40 yards <laughs> out of bounds. Uh, only two offsides. Uh, Julio's got to work on that. He got them both, yeah. And the fouls, He's dominating that stat, so that's good. Good yeah. to see from He's him. He's holding it down for the team. Yeah. I, do you get an award for that? I think the over-under was four in the press box as we started the game. I was like, <laughs> four, four? Yeah, okay, four, okay. Yeah, over-under was pretty so, even. Yeah, there. I I will I will take the three points and be happy with the direction we're headed. Yeah, I agree. Should we get to the scores? Yeah, do the scores from around the league. We have Atlanta against Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota 2-1 over Atlanta. They could they're, not come back. They're right behind us in the standing. Minnesota's yeah. having a good season. Yeah. Um, Portland. Portland. Ooh, Portland had an own goal. Or was it two own goals? Mm. Oh, no, one of them got called back. Uh, yeah, uh, Charlotte uh, beat Portland 2-0. D.C. United tied Philly. Uh, D.C. United was up 2-0. Yeah, and then Philly, Philly came, came back. back yeah. um, Miami decided to show how great they were <laughs> against Red Bull. Six uh, one. Oh, it was what? it was one nothing at halftime for the Red, Red Bull. Red Bull was ahead. Are you kidding? Yeah, no, halftime. absolutely not. Red Bull were up one nothing. The Red Bull also beat them four nothing already this season. Oh so, yeah, they were the only they were like the team to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Lionel Messi set the record for most assists in a game. Wow. Five. Most assistant in because he most, scored the last one. Most goal contributions one, in, a, in a game and a half, six. And Suarez had a hat trick. Now, who whose record did he break? Former uh, RSL man. Javier Morales. Oh, you guys don't know? Oh, uh, good. Yay! Jason I know what's that. Uh, Clint Mathis. Oh, oh Mathis, four. that far back? Yeah, dude. He scored five against the Metro as a Metro star against LA or. That's Wait, LA are we considered the Metro Stars? Stars? No, they were no. the Metro Stars. The Red Bull oh, were the Metro Red Bull Stars. were the Metro Stars. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so he broke their own team record against we're, con them. we're considered the Urban Stars. Ur the what? They're the Metro, we're the Urban, or we're the Suburban Stars. Suburban Stars, that <laughs> great, sounds great. Great joke. Um, <laughs> Orlando <laughs> lost to Cincy, 1-0. Um, San Jose came out of nowhere and beat LAFC 3-1. Yeah. And it wasn't that close. No, it was not. It was a terrible game by LAFC. Um, Toronto took it to FC Dallas 3-1. to one. Dallas. Uh, rough year for Dallas. Definitely. Uh, Chicago lost to New England. Uh, terrible game. Um, and then Houston and St. Louis 0-0. Um, I saw a stat on those. They had like, there was like 36 shots or something in that game. Houston was actually playing really well. And so none that's of them surprising. Um, so 0-0, zero, zero, 24 shots from Houston, 17 from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 10 on target for Houston, to be fair. St. Louis only put 4 on target. 
That's insane. Yeah. Um, but this next game is the one I wanted to talk about. So Nashville against uh, Montreal, yeah. 4-1. Nashville is in form. They, they looked good in that game. They are going to be dangerous. And also, did you see their kit? Their kit is their, tight. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's his name? Johnny Cash. Yeah, the black the, one. The black one. Oh, black on gray so on black. Good. Yeah. So good. It's a good but, looking kit. Um, uh, what's his name? Walker Zimmerman. Zimmerman. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Zimmerman, Honey <laughs> Mukhtar. I mean, Ooh. they're they're going to be what they were a little bit ago. So I think we got to watch out for those guys. And Surridge, he's he's coming on oh, strong yeah, too. Surridge too. Yeah, he finally got going. Yeah. Uh, Vancouver and. Austin, 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, I had to report on Boring. that. Um, Demir Krylock didn't play because he has an ankle injury. Demir Krylock still hasn't scored since we said he scored his last professional goal. We might be able to see He it. has 310 minutes playing for Vancouver this season. Wow. And he did score his last goal against us. No, that's not it. So until that's not even <gasps> four is third kit. Oh, did you see Man U's third kit? I have it. Oh, oh dude, the, so the good. The green that. one? So no, one. not the green one. They redid it. The one for 2025. Um, oh, and then on Sunday, uh, we had two games. Um, NYC lost to Colorado 2-0. Colorado is looking very good. I watched I watched that game. That yeah. was a Did you see the goals? Like, Navajo, that guy's just like finding 19 the corner. What, what? Oh. No, the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their DP guy. Mm -hmm. And then Cole Bassett. Put in a really nice. Yeah, they ended it shift late, as well. Two nothing. Yeah. Who is it? Minnesota Oluwashi. 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 That guy. I want him on our team. Yeah, he's, he's he was. He's, he's the guy who scored. He's the guy he's, who pushed Brody down into the box and then flicked the ball. Oh yeah, he was the power sub that came in and yeah. changed the game. Tinked he's he's the there, post. Anderson Julio. But better. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And then Seattle and L.A. Was it zero zero? Yeah. Blame, yeah. huh? I thought they had like a penalty kick. They did. And they lost it? They missed. No way. <laughs> yeah. Rudy Diaz or? Uh, was it LA that had it? No, I thought it was Seattle that took it. Seattle had one? Yeah. Missed it? Was it Musovsky that missed it? Oh, no, no, no. I don't think they had a penalty. But yeah, Moose did have a shot on goal and he totally shanked it. Yeah. He had a pretty good chance. and Sorry, Moose. Missed. 12 games. That's insane. 12 games. And Seattle are 2 5 and 4. Really? Yeah. But they have a really good defense, they say. Nope. <laughs> what is you know the standings right does, now? You know Where who does at? have a really good defense? Us. Guess guess which other teams in the league have only given up nine goals. So we have given up only nine goals on the season. Goals against are nine for us. There are two other teams. Can you name them? Uh, us, one on your Cincinnati. screen. Cincinnati. That's cheating. And so Columbus. Columbus. So cheating. They're both in the state of Ohio. I was going to give you clues. Gosh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Freaking Bodag. I'm trying to make you look like idiots. Freaking Bodag. I, I bought you a delicious bass. Whoa. A delicious bass. Whoa, what? Get what? your own Todd's, Napoleon. Oh, yeah, we're in first. Do you know that? No, I did not know that. We're in first. And yeah. Minnesota has played one less game than us. But they are points per game higher than us. But we've played more games, so we have one more. Same same one record except for we have one more draw. Six two three for us. Six two two. I four. can't wait to see how we screw this up. Oh, what? Puck. Why do you You're say worried. stuff like that? Yeah. It totally jinxes us, You're so, man. Yeah. Why you gotta yeah. be so well, negative? Do you, our, 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 our night, you don't ruin it with our nine hundred fans. <laughs> 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 Thousands of people. I'm a little ticked off. Okay, bro. I look on Reddit and there's only been like. The three. same crap from last time, and it's like we already talked about it. Like, the come three on. Three negative just, things, that's it. Yeah, huh? give me some more negativity. I know we laugh a lot, but it's not that bad. Oh, sorry, I'm here laughing as we. I know, you're like, really. All right. Anyway, the two other great defenses of the league are right now are Columbus and Cincinnati, but Cincinnati hasn't been able to score many goals. They only have 13 goals so far this season, which kind of means they're figuring out a way to shut down Lucho Costa. And here's the secret. You ready? Mm -hmm. Put a body on him. He's a little guy. Acosta? Whoa. Yeah, I know. Crazy, he's, right? He's kind of like uh, Joao Plata. You know, he just had a lower <laughs> center of gravity. It's yeah. kind of hard to tip him over. He's a little more skilled, but yeah. You know, like that blow-up little punching bag that you used to have as a kid? Uh-huh. And it just always popped bottom, up. Pop it always bag, popped up. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. him. Uh -huh. The other thing to point out that... Uh, <laughs> It's having I'm a rough surprise. Year. Tyler hasn't. RSL is second in goal differential. Goal differential. We have a nine plus nine goal differential. And I am so jazzed about that. 
Who are we? Yeah. Who are we? We are Chicho's team. Yeah, and uh, Miami has a 14 that. goal differential. Yeah, we're not starting the way I expected, but I am. I am here for it. I'm, I am enjoying the season so far. So, now we do have a game this Wednesday. They're at New Mexico to play New, New Mexico United in the U.S. Open Cup. And oh. their nickname is the Yellows? I don't know. Their nickname is the... Amarillos? Ga Ga the Gauchos? Los Amarillos? I don't know. I know, that, but it's a good program. They're in Albuquerque. Uh, we interviewed. I, I've been racking my brain. Who do we talk to? We talked to our boy, Devin yes. Sandoval. Devin Sandoval, who is very heavily involved with New Mexico and United. Yep, if you'd like there. to go back and listen to that. Yeah, that was a really what good a cool result. guy. Yeah. He was really cool. He was impressive. He, he, lo he didn't have his hair. I was kind of sad about that. I was kind of hoping for the big, <coughs> the big hair, big dev, you know, thing, but... That's all right. He still brought his big personality, and that was fun. So the next couple of games, Wednesday for the U.S. Open Cup, Saturday at the Galaxy. That should be... I'm always looking for, maybe every game is like this, but it's a good... 8.30 kick. That's what I'm saying. That's a nice... You see that? Yeah, you distracted me with kick. the third kick. Which one's that? That's for next year. Oh, next Scott year's. League. Manchester United. But and, and we only kind of touched on this, but uh, did, did uh, the... What's their names? Go all the way through the... The Bundesliga undefeated, no no losses. Uh, Bayern Munich. No Leverkusen. Leverkusen. Yeah, Leverkusen won the league. They won the league like four weeks ago. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, Just remember we talked about the German league. Yeah, the Bayern had won 11, 11 season in a row, and then Harry Kane showed up. And he's uh, still scoring goals for them, but they can't seem to stop other clubs. And there was a rumor we can talk about Thomas Tuchel even. Bayern Munich can go into Manchester United, and which no, 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 it's not true. Oh, good. Zidane, uh, Zidane Zidane, or whatever his name is. Zidane Zidane. Yeah, he might actually Zidane, um, huh? come over to Man U, and we would swap with no. with him. Yeah. Really. So because uh, who is he? Where is, is he, he coaching right now? Uh, Barcelona. No. Or not... Real Madrid. Oh, who is? Anyway, Leverkusen. You looked that up. Leverkusen did win the league, no losses. Congrats to uh, Leverkusen. Is first the season over? They played first, 34 games? First ever season that they won the Bundesliga. And uh, they did it by losing no matches. And I blame... Harry Kane. Shaka. Granite Shaka. He came really? from Arsenal. I've seen Shaka Khan. He wasn't he was done. He was even in the area. We knew he wasn't done, but we couldn't sign him for cheap enough. And so we let him go, and he ended up at... They've still got two cool games to go. But still, so far, zero yeah. losses. <laughs> so impressive. How's Mines doing? Mines 05. They're in they're, the playoff. Yeah, they're down at the bottom. bottom. Playoff. So our RSL, game against the Galaxy, coming up this Saturday. Really, really interested to see how that goes. Yes. We'll kind of find out. The two... Tough game. Tough game. First place, third place. <sighs> Great matchup. That's going to be exciting. And then the next home game is the 18th when Colorado Rapids come back uh, after beating us. Two and we owe them so bad. So yeah, bad. Absolutely. I'm even using my deep voice to express my consternation. That's how we know it's serious. All What's right. the movie rated? It's rated R. <laughs> R. R is in rage. Because <laughs> that's what we're going to feel <laughs> till we win. We're going to feel Thanks, Batman. I was born in it. <laughs> now you have to get your left bin there if you're doing the... Where is she? Where is she? <laughs> anyway, so we're going to talk about your... Uh, come on, Crawley. I was just going to have to say Martha first. Okay. Who's Martha? Both their moms. Ask Superman. Ask... <laughs> his... yeah, he missed How it. How do you know? Right. Carry on. Anyway. So, come on, Crawley update! We made the playoffs. We talked about it last week. It was exciting final day. Playoff, uh, first game of the first leg of the playoff was today, uh, but it's tomorrow. It rained. There was it a lot rained. of rain. It, it, it was rained. A downpour. They got the vacuum so, out right now. Yep. It rained. It, oh, it was lots and lots of rain. Come on, it they rained. They did a pitch though? inspection and they said, nope, can't play. Is it so, just because they weren't ready for rain in England? That's kind of like, well, how do you not know? 
I, why you they just the don't have any. Out? They don't have any uh, uh, field gutters. Oh, there's so not when it runoff. fills up. There's no. There's no way to like. There's not. A, I'm can't sure. squeegee it out of there. Most fields aren't on a slope, so. They oh, they're not pitched as well as we have here. Yeah, they're pitches well, also, and it's pitched. It's a five thousand seat stadium. So, so there's room. It's a few it's, little guys. It's, it's, a little it's guy. not state of the art. They don't have heaters under there. They, the drainage probably isn't uh, like the U.S. Trouble, old school. trouble with their drainage. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. So and that brings us to our sponsor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, move the game to tomorrow. Up six. So stomach, first diarrhea. game, first leg at home <laughs> against oh. uh, MK Dons is tomorrow. And are they donning the green kit that you're wearing right now? No. Mint. It's mint, Mint's. baby. Sorry. Man, they may maybe they'll do this on the road. Although they have been playing, it's a good looking kit. They're uh, in the Galacticos. Ooh. Gary calls them the Galacticos because they have white on white. Oh it's yeah, a really nice kit. They probably even play that on the road. They'll be at home in their red, in their red kit. So they play Tuesday and then Saturday. And today, Doncaster away to Crew Alexandra, beat them two nothing. Uh, Doncaster hasn't lost in months. <sighs> They've been looking good. Yeah. So, so we'll probably meet them in the final. Yeah, because it's home and home, right? Home and home. Home and home is the first round. Second, the winner of Doncaster Crew like Alexander Crawley Town MK Dons meets May nineteenth at Wembley. One and game. The winner it takes all. Yep, they all get the beautiful third place trophy, fourth <laughs> fourth place trophy that comes along with being promoted to League One. Yeah, there was another battle for the championship. Who was that? I don't know. Some team after, won. After Wrexham left, a blue kind of team. They they Stockport won, won the league. No, I I didn't mean the this league, the league above it, right? To get promoted to the championship. Yeah, League One to. The I championship. saw the highlights. Portsmouth. Well, did Portsmouth win? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, there's I know there's, a, there's fourteen a playoff football. there. And there was a yeah. a blue team won it. You know, for having a podcast, we sure don't know a lot. <laughs> I looked at stuff all the time. I know That's a ton crazy. about MLS. <laughs> About stuff like that, I'm like yeah. And a lot of people are excited. Leicester promoted back to, yeah, as they should be. They never should have went down, but whatever. Get those, get those foxes back up where they belong. The so Var- the Vardy boys. Yeah, the yo-yo happened. And it looks like Bolton and Barnsley and Peterborough and Oxford, Oxford are in the playoffs in League One. Looking at the standings, Portsmouth and Derby County, Darby and Bolton. Bolton All promoted wandering around the championship. Bolton actually ended up in League Two yeah. for a sec. They were also in the Premier League not too long ago. Yeah, your boy played for him. Ty- no, Stu Holden. Stu Holden. Oh, yeah. I thought it was Tyler T- Taylor Twelman. No, no, Stu Holden. He didn't. He didn't make. He it. didn't make it over there. And Portsmouth uh, also got promoted. And then the championship. Oxford. But why don't you guys go on about how your teams are doing? What is going on with the Arsenal? Still the top of the league, but only because they've played more games than Man City. Son of a, yes, Man City. Still, if they win out, will win the, the English Premier League. I was they thinking, kicked the Wolves' butt. Yeah, yeah and man. they they look good. That's the stupid thing about the whole thing. Erling Holland is they're Holland. not really gonna lose. There's nobody left that could really even give them a game at this point. So they're unless. The league comes out and drops points for some reason. Yeah, that was, uh, dude, that's so frustrating. Because they did it to Everton, and they did it to Nottingham, Nottingham twice, 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 twice this year. And yet they won't do it to Man City? They're going to let them win the league and then... I, and then I what? saw a rumor that they might be dropping charges. Maybe not all of them, but some of them being dropped. And just like, come on. But anyway, Leicester and Ipswich Town. Oh, yeah, Ipswich, that's who it was. Promoted. Yep, they, yep. Ipswich Town was in the Premier League in like 91, 92. Or, or, um, they yeah. were in it for a little bit. A long yeah. time ago. And then Leeds, Southampton, West Brom, and Norwich. Looks like they're in the playoff. Did Leeds lose today? I thought, that, I thought I saw something that said they lost. Was that part of the playoff? So in the playoffs... Um, they oh, haven't, haven't played happened yet. Okay. Norwich so. plays Leeds and West Brom beats Southampton. I'm kind of rooting for Southampton. Kind of rooting for Americans. So, in that case, it's really just Norwich. If you want to watch the a, big redhead, if you want to watch a really great soccer documentary, watch Southampton Till I Die. Okay. What's it on? I am. I think it's on Netflix. 
You can find it. But look for that one, Southampton. It's a lot better than that Wrexham one. But I think they had a third season. Wrexham one swears. <gasps> no, they no. use harsh language. Are you serious? Uh-huh. Oh, man. Vulgar man. terms are used in that one. That is crazy. So uh, if you, you would plug your kids' ears, I am telling you, or they'll ooh. burn. They will burn their yeah, ears you wouldn't right expect, off. You really wouldn't expect that kind of language from Deadpool. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, you would. Uh, so, oh do we have any sponsors you want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> do you got the runs? Stuff? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Stuff for the stuff. Um, yeah, Brandon Steinekert, uh, do you like the sound of annoying plastic hitting a stupid paddle? Um, actually, that's probably a terrible way to start that. That was really rough. I Let's know. start over. Say hey, the guy okay. who Chris, likes playing pickleball now. Chris Richards and and uh, Crystal Palace beat uh, Man United today, four zero. Now go ahead, try it after that. Oh my <laughs> gosh, man. <laughs> You guys lost to Crystal Do you know what? Palace like, by four. Four to four zero. Four to zero. Like, if you watch uh, Jamie Carragher break down that game, or, you know, he breaks down Man U and shows how awful they are at the moment. So bad. It is so hard to be but there. Chris Richards did really well, and he's an American. And uh, Crystal Palace isn't going to be anywhere close to the bottom because they've had no. a... I think they've won four in the last five or something like that. So Yeah, they're safe. Good job, other sister club, sister of pain. All right, go ahead. Buy ghost pickleball paddles. They're awesome. They are. Yeah. And they got really good pictures on them. Yeah. And I heard they're actually a pretty solid paddle. And they're not affiliated with ghost um, energy drinks. No, don't get that confused. Correct. But you can still buy it if you want. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, thanks for listening. Also, remember, please subscribe at YouTube, Goals TV. Uh, Subscribe to all the places you find our podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, wherever you find them. Do you know we're on um, uh, Amazon Podcast? Too. Really? Uh, Amazon. That's wicked. Yeah. yeah. Every now and then, if you have an Alexa and you tell her to play our podcast, she will. Well, why don't you do that right now? Hey, Alexa, play my podcast. No, play my Oh, I got there to what we special. Sorry. Are you supposed to do this? Alexa, play RSL Random Fan Podcast. Oh, right. That way if it And if they're listening. They're listening. So bad. If they're listening. <laughs> that's how you're supposed to talk to electronics. Oh. Oh, boy. You have to speak robot to them. Oh, yeah. please go on Reddit. Please. Somebody find find some somebody comments. that doesn't like our podcast and say, and hey, do you, know, do you know the they... best thing you could do? Yeah, poke them. Go on Reddit and just type in. RSL Random Fan Podcast. And the then, greatest. Is the best. Then just tell us how you feel about us. Yeah. That's all I want. Uh, yes, That's do that. Really... And Brennan will be happy. Yeah. Come on. Thanks, guys. Thank you. No, I mean you guys. Thanks for. Oh, thank you guys. Thanks for doing this podcast with me. I think oh, it's really fun. It's very endearing. Yeah, you guys it has awesome. been great. And yeah. thanks to our fans for listening. Thank you for listening. And uh, when Tyler says you, he's going to give you a hat, one day you're going to get it. Someday. <laughs> Thanks for listening.